Last time I saw this man play StarCraft 2 was at the ESL Summer Event, which at this point is a couple of weeks ago. Now, he made it to the quarterfinals of the tournament with one of his arms, his mouse hand, in a cast. For some reason, I mean, he still played phenomenally for some reason. It didn't really seem to bother him all too much. But I would literally see him take off the cast before he sat down at his desk. Absolutely ludicrous. What I've got for you today is a best of five series that was played, well, as of me casting it yesterday. This is the finals of the Korean StarCraft League weekly number 17, 18? 18 or 17, I think it's 18 actually. Regardless, game number one, we find ourselves on the map Babylon and spawning right here in the bottom right -hand corner, playing with the blue Terran SCVs, we have Cure. His opponent in the opposite corner, playing here with the red Zerg drones, likewise, of course, also from Korea, we have none other than Dark. Alrighty, Dark versus Cure in a best of five series with Mr. Cure, alright. Going for a cheeky little command center first. I was actually so impressed though, because I thought for a long time, right, we were... Commentated the tournament, obviously, and I thought for a long time it has to be his keyboard hand, right? Like, I can imagine playing a, a game of StarCraft 2 in a cast, somewhat, maybe, uh, with my keyboard hand, because I really only need to move around my fingers and maybe turn around my wrist every once in a while. I think he had a problem around his elbow, so I can imagine, you know, playing the game, but no, it turns out it was actually his mouse hand that was the issue. Not entirely sure if he still has to cast. It's been, uh, yeah, a few weeks at this point, so maybe it's gotten removed since then. I'm not exactly sure how healthy the guy currently is, but at the very least, Cure was very impressive. I mean, he was already looking incredibly good leading up to the tournament, especially as Terran for his Protoss. Just absolutely beautiful. I uh, casted quite a few of those games, and he looks pretty much unstoppable in that matchup right now. But anyways, it's once again a... Uh, a weekly finals, right? And it's once again featuring our Zork player as well. I don't think Dark really requires a lot of additional introduction. I've casted his men many, many times, and honestly, he is probably the most fun StarCraft II professional to follow, because it seems like oftentimes he doesn't really care that much, right? Like, y you get that very nonchalant type of feel, that very laid-back approach when you're watching Dark games, like, yeah, whatever, I'll just make 20 Zerklings right now. I hit a supply block at 36, oh, no biggie, I'll just make three Overlords and queue up seven more Queens, and somehow, some way, I'll micro my way out of this game with Infestors. I don't know, oftentimes it really strikes... Dark very much just strikes me as the kind of guy who's playing these tournament matches, and he's playing for quite a chunk of money, while, you know, hanging out with his buddies on Discord, or something like that. It seems to me like he's oftentimes half-focused on the game, and as soon as he falls behind, that's when he really powers up. Anyways, we'll see. I might be completely wrong, he might be completely focused, but oftentimes he is kinda... He's a little bit cheeky. Speaking of being cheeky, this little Overlord here, definitely not in its normal position. Normally this would be the spot right here for the Overlord, and maybe it'll check out this ramp. Okay. He's gonna see the timing right here of the Starport as well as the Factory, and these Zerks, well, that's all they really need to know. He will know exactly what it is he's playing against right now. Do I have sounds on? I did have sounds on. For some reason, I did not hear Jimmy's gun, but my personal audio is a little bit low. I thought for a second I may not have game audio on. Anyways, I hear the music in the background, but not the sound effects. I guess I just... Uh, my left ear is not particularly good. I guess I just wasn't paying attention. Okay, so this is one of those very popular builds right now, right? Command Center first, eh, maybe not necessarily the most popular approach, but I actually don't mind it at all, especially in a best of five series. But you know your opponent, you know their tendencies, I think a CC first is an excellent option. So, going for the really quick Command Center allows you a very fast timing attack on the back of this too, so... Normally, this sort of attack with 16 Marines, 2 Medivex, and Stimpak would hit at about 5 minutes and 10 seconds. And you can see we're currently, well, at 14 Marines. Apparently, we're actually pushing out ever so... Oh, <gasps> That was unnecessary. Anyways, apparently, we're pushing out ever so slightly earlier. Look at the timing right now. 4 minutes and 40 seconds. That really shows you the strength right here of that quick command center on the low ground. Third CC right now starts up as well. Medivex are gonna roam around the map, but... They're not going straight across, so despite this very tight opener from Cure, he wants to hit at a bit of a strange angle, which is now going to allow Dark to produce another round of Zerklings. You need about 30 Zerklings and a bunch of Queens against this, so as long as you have Queens ready to go on the Metavex and then Zerklings to surround all the rest of it, yeah. I think the amount of units right here that Dark has at his disposal is perfect. Okay. Yep, so it's not really achieving that much, but it, oh my god, seven overlords, that's what I'm talking about. Why are we making seven overlords at 83 supply? 
That's insane. That's unless we want to go for like a Roach Max right here and we just need those overlords right now. But no, we go back into droning. That is a, a very substantial error. You will never see a Protoss player queuing up seven pylons or a Terran player making seven supply depots around their main base right now. I wonder if sometimes that is to do with the rapid firing, right, that, that Zork players are very fond of where they have that repeat rate as low as possible and then just hold down the button for ever so slightly too long. If you ever, um, I mean, I, I don't know exactly how often this would happen, but if you ever have a chance to type at a pro gamer's keyboard with their permission, of course, you probably, yeah, it's, it's gotta be a weird situation where that is ever relevant. But anyways, what I'm getting at is that if you try to type on a pro gamer's keyboard, you will probably not be able to. Their repeat rate is so incredibly low that it's not really usable as a regular keyboard. It's really only used as a tool to play StarCraft 2. Especially the Zerg players. Their repeat delay, like you hold down one button, right? You, you say, for example, you, time, you try and type one G, it will suddenly type about a dozen of them. So that's why oftentimes you have like four Gs or so whenever the guys are trying to GG out of the game. I wonder if that's what happened to those overlords as well. Anyways, Cure attempting to get some damage done over here, dropping the main base, inviting his opponent into the Widow Mine. But Dark did not take the bait. Third Command Center, flying down towards the low ground. Now this is kind of interesting here from Dark. Going into double Evo here, already having finished plus one carapace, and now into the Roach upgrades. So these Zerklings are gonna be pretty tanky. Really not a lot of SCVs for them to kill over here right now. Fourth hatchery here in the bottom left hand corner, and this is gonna be a big snipe if he gets it. I think he will. Yep, I think targeting here is indeed the right pull. That is super well done right there by Cure. Loses a few SCVs, but gets a bunch of drones, and more importantly, that hatchery as well. One problem you run into when you're playing Roach Ravager based armies as a Zerg player is that you don't normally double expend. So, in a lot of Ling Bane based fights, so if Zerg wants to focus on Zerglings and Banelings primarily, they will take a 4th and a 5th base right around the same time after saturating 3 bases fully. And the idea is that you sort of treat one of those hatcheries as a macro hatchery just for larva. So since Ling Bane is very expensive as far as the larva count costs, you need that additional amount. Okay, beautiful! Lovely work! No cancel there either, so Cure gets the full kill. This is where Cure is honestly one of the very best players in the world. I, I always feel like he doesn't really get as much credit as he deserves. He's incredibly powerful. He's very good when it comes to microing two fights simultaneously. I know that this is a skill that a lot of Terran players have, but Cure seems to be better at it than everybody else. Just constantly getting value out of it. Yep, getting a bunch of queens, getting a bunch of hatcheries. And in the meantime, it's not like he's really slowed down very much either, right? Like he's still macroing on the back of this. We'll probably see a fourth command center fired up here pretty soon. I'm actually a little surprised we haven't seen one yet. Uh, we really do need to get a fourth CC going here eventually, so we can also afford going into some ghost production later. Because I do think that's what we're going to need. Unless Cure just wants to win the game here. How many barracks are we on now? We're only at five barracks. I think if he wanted to go and win the game at this point, he would have to be at like seven or eight. Then it might be possible to go for like a 2-2 timing attack that is going for the kill. But in this particular instance, I don't think that's really what Cure wants to do. Okay, anyways, fourth hatchery here did finish up in the bottom left hand corner. This one will once again be reattempted. Macro hatch is now going to finish up in the main base too, as we do have bailing speed started up. So this transition towards roaches is very curious though. Like he didn't really, like the roaches and the ravagers haven't really served Dark particularly well here. All they've really done is... Well, I guess, I guess maybe it's it's a good thing if it would be like a 2, maybe a 3 base all-in. Yeah, they're gonna be nice against these siege tanks, so maybe that's the reason why he's made them. Did he get... No, he... Yeah, no, he did get Roach Speed, actually. That's interesting to me. So Vipers are coming up right now. This is a Ling... Uh, yeah, a Ling Bane based army with Roaches and Ravages for support, and then very quick Hive. Baneling Speed is not done yet, but apparently he doesn't really need it either, as a lot of these Marines do end up losing their lives against a few slow Banes. So Trifical Hooks, though, is finishing up soon. Honestly, this army is looking kind of dangerous right now, though. Yeah, if Cure does not siege up... Oop! Okay. If he does not siege up, he's gonna be in a world of trouble. Once again, another Council right over there on that hatchery up north. Targeting the Baneling over there as well before he picks up and gets him out of there. Ultra Cavern. Okay. So we have a couple of Vipers rushed out, straight into an Ultra Cavern. I'm not sure how I feel about the Ultralisk Cavern here. At least in my personal games, I have found zero success playing Ultralisks when behind. 
So Ultra seemed to be an amazing unit when you're already ahead, maybe when the game is slightly even, right? And you kind of catch the Terran player off guard. I wonder if this is something that Dark is specifically doing against Cure, because maybe he realizes Cure is not really the type of guy to transition towards Ghosts very rapidly. Now, another unit that's pretty good against these Ultras, though, is, of course, the Liberator. Liberator's here already annoying in the main base. Do we have any additional ones? Yeah, we've got a bunch more here inside of the natural expansion. He needs to be careful, though. Ultras here can certainly catch him off guard. Vipers, okay, a little bit off to the side. Those Marines are trying to hunt it down. Parasitic Bombs is what we're going to settle on here instead. Vipers will get sniped, at least if he decides to target it down. And it looks to me like Dark cleaned up that battle pretty nicely. Despite the fact that those, uh, those units there were... Oof. <laughs> those units there were not quite in the perfect position, the Vipers. And they actually did manage to survive. Apparently those Marines decided to retarget at the last possible moment. Okay, now Ultras are scary units when they catch you off guard. Ultras are so uncommon these days that Terran players don't really have that much experience playing against them anymore. He did see the Ultralist Cavern, however, in the main base. So there's certainly a chance that he is gonna fire up a Ghost Academy soon. Like I said, this 4th Command Center is definitely on the later end of things, so without 4 base economy... It's kind of difficult to afford ghosts, so the earliest possible moment we're gonna see ghosts is right about right now. Yep, there it is, okay. Ghost Academy coming up. <laughs> I feel like Dark's been trying to play catch up the entire game long, and I really wonder if Ultras are gonna be the unit to aim for here. Another 19 drones end up getting killed right there by Cure, who's stimming in to kill another hatchery, but it turns out this hatchery wasn't even made yet. So effectively, Dark has now been reduced to just, well, Three base economy. Okay. Here we go. Ultras just trying to be annoying. We do have a bunch more drops over here again as well. That hatchery is super dead. We have a drop over here too, right at the front. And this is gonna hurt as well as those queens are starting to fall. This is even before the plus three, plus three upgrades are done for those marines. They're only gonna get more powerful from here. And this is now an excellent game right here for Cure. Maybe not playing it flawlessly, maybe not all too happy about the game necessarily himself, but he is definitely outplaying Dark here. Yeah, look at how much tankiness, though, these Ultralis have, right? <laughs> yeah, Marines alone are not gonna cut it. Parasitic Bomb right there? Good split. Okay. So here come the Ghosts. Maybe Dark is not afraid of Ghosts, but... I think he should be. I just don't really see exactly what he's going to be able to do against them when they're out in relatively big numbers. Assuming Cure will step up the pressure and continue the pressure, I, I just don't see exactly how Dark is going to be able to survive the next attack. Personal Cloaking coming up as well, 5th Command Center coming up. We do have Infestors coming. Now this is the... Oh shit, I'm in a bad game button for Dark, okay? Whenever you see two Infestors at any random moment in the game, that's a game where Dark is like, Oh no, I have to get something done here, and the only way I can do it is by microing. So this is what I was talking about earlier. I feel like this is like... Super Saiyan 3 right now, okay? Up to this point, we just had like a, a regular Super Saiyan, right? Like a normie Super Saiyan, not really quite channeling the power of the entire planet. This is where Dark's hair is turning blonde and he starts screaming, you know? In the previous episode of Dark, we saw Dark losing all of his stuff. He's lost like seven hatcheries up to this point, and now suddenly his hair is turning blonde. We spent four episodes watching Dark just scream. Suddenly he starts shouting, Kaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
survives with like 10 HP, then runs back home. No, 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 don't run into the tanks though, that'd be a bad, a bad time. This was about two months ago, I tried watching Dragon Ball Z again, because I really liked it as a kid, and I was trying to find a way to legally buy the show. Right? Now, I found out, I'm not really an avid anime watcher, I found out it's very difficult to do so. <laughs> I, I asked about it on stream, and I found out basically everybody's a pirate. That's what, that's what I found out that day. I was like, guys, I'm trying to, like, watch this show, and it's not available on any of the shows that I can watch in the Netherlands, or any of the services in the Netherlands. I want to pay money for it, but I literally can't. The only way for me to get it is by getting, like, a, a Blu-ray player, and then, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. I want to be able to watch it anywhere. I want to watch it, like, I don't have a Blu-ray thing in my, in my computer anymore, either. Like, I haven't had that in years. Turns out it's surprisingly difficult. I had no idea that it's surprisingly difficult to watch some of those older shows. Bit of a shame. Okay, so we're going Ultra Ravager. Now look at the production tab. When's the last time you've seen both Ultras and Ravagers at the same time? I don't know either. I guess the only little asterisk we can put right here to cure his gameplay is that his economy is very small. Yeah, he's lost he's lost 17 SCVs in this game, but he's only got 58 of them right now. This is not quite that Terran army that we or this Terran late game that we normally see where there's like seven command centers just sitting around ready to drop orbital commands. That's not really what Cure is playing here. He's playing it a little bit differently. Massive fungal growth does come down on a lot of the ghosts. Corozu Bal's here trying to land wherever. Okay. Yeah, you've poked the bear, Cure. And with the bear, I mean the hatcheries. And with the hatcheries, I mean dark. This is uh, not usually one of the bases that Zerg players will take on this map, but... Dark has managed to find some value here. Yeah, this is actually a location Cure only just now found out about. This should be a relatively easy one for him to kill, though, because it's so close to that high ground, and I just don't see how Zerk is going to run in there. But apparently what we're going to do is run in up north instead. Liberator? Don't care. Siege tank? Don't care. Planetary? Dead. Base at the bottom of the map, though, is gone right now. Vipers are starting to take tremendous amounts of damage, and you know, the second one goes down as well right before. Oh my god, these links are on ultras are actually going to town. Yeah, I'm too used, I guess, to that Terran late game that we see every single Terran player going for, where they just have 17 command centers to replace the ones they've lost. But that is not the style that Cure has been playing over the last few months. I have seen him do that as well in the past. I'm not exactly sure why he steered away from it, because Terran late game is incredibly good. Now suddenly, this game has actually been flipped upside down. Cure now needs to get something done. He's got only 23 SCVs, and it's not like he's got orbitals to just replace this all with. More and more units are gonna end up going down. Massive fungal growths over here as well. Oh no. Did Cure just grasp defeat from the jaws of victory? Looks like one of my latter games. Ah, uh, there's still a lot of siege tanks though. Yeah, I think there's gonna be a moment where Dark needs to collapse on top of this. And apparently that moment is not right now. No, I think he's just gonna give up the hatchery here instead. I think if he wants to fight this, he'll probably fight it exclusively on creep. And I think his assessment here is right though. The odds right now of Terra not continuing this aggression and going deeper onto creep are very low. I would say that, uh, yeah, he's probably... <laughs> the Zerkling's in the wrong spot. Uh, I think he would probably... Yeah, okay. I, I think Dark is likely to be aggress... Or sorry, Cure is likely to be aggressive here. He knows that there's a bunch of infestors on the ground, but... We're once again going into mass infester, by the way. I say it once again because of that series that I casted recently between Dark and Byun. Absolute banger. If you haven't seen that yet, I'll go ahead and post a link to it down below in the description of this video. Right below the like button, by the way, which you should take your little finger, press it. That's what you should do. So Dark's just giving up on whatever he needs to, okay? These bases are all pretty irrelevant. He's got a new juicy mineral line up north. He wants to get a banger of an engagement in. He's just making more infestors again. This is such a dark game. He does have Neural Parasite. It's gonna take a while. Here we go. Can we snipe that siege tank? Yeah, <laughs> he targeted. <laughs> That's two tanks going down. Cure, you, you killed one of your own men. Oh my god, Dark's doing it again. See, with this late game, Terran doesn't have infinite... Blah, 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 blah. They don't have any of that. There's very little... Blah, blah, blah. Neural? I think we're gonna do more neurals. Oh, we're gonna neural the ghost instead and try to EMP the other ghosts. We're now sniping one of... <laughs> he sniped one of the ghosts with the ghost. Cure doesn't have detection, guys. He should add on a raven or something against his mass infestor style. 
But I know Terrans are allergic to ravens. Oh my god, look at him! Dark's completing side quests! Look at him! Look at him! He sniped three of his opponent's ghosts with a ghost! And there's 17 more infestors to take that place? Oh no. Oh no. Oh, I feel bad for Cure. Uh, maybe I shouldn't. This army's still looking kind of scary, even though he just lost a lot of his stuff. Sadly here for Dark, all of his infestors are right there, other than just a single one over here. It'd be kind of nice if they were split up here, I think. He's just tunneling underneath. Slowly letting the Terran army devour itself. Yeah, now we're positioning his army in such a way that maybe we can counterattack or snatch a bunch of reinforcements. We're counterattacking a Terran player. Last time I checked, Terran can fly their structures, right? That's still true, right, guys? Ghosts over here up north being annoying. He's gonna need some sort of detection over there as well. Okay. Oh my god. Dark. Okay, fungal, 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 massive fungals! Oh no! Cure is getting absolutely, d well, I mean, I say that. He's getting somewhat demolished. He still has killed the majority of that Zerk army as well. Dark, you absolute madman. Imagine if he just didn't make seven overlords. Like, he made like eight overlords and 80 supply. Right, like, what is that? That was like, that was like Gold League levels of macro. Like, sorry to the Gold League viewers watching this, but I don't mean any offense, but we power up so much, so much later into the game. Why do we not just play a cleaner early game so we can avoid these situations in the first place and we only have to start pulling rabbits out of hats when it's absolute necessity? Rant disabled. Seriously though, this man is an absolute god at late game control, but it's almost... I feel like half the times I see Dark playing late game, he never needed to be there in the first place, you know what I mean? A lot of the reasons why all of those hatcheries kept falling is because he had to make all of those overlords earlier and just little macro slip-ups here and there that his opponent never made. Now we have a banger of a game, though. Don't, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm saying this to Dark if Dark's goal is to win as many games as possible. As a, a fan of StarCraft 2 and as a fan of watching this game, I highly recommend Dark to continue playing the way that he is just because it is absolutely amazing. It's absolutely amazing to watch. It's also the reason why I keep covering Dark on this channel, because the man plays way more late game than any of the other Zerg players do. <laughs> Anyways, concussive shells, a little bit late on that upgrade. And with a little bit, I mean 20, no, nah, maybe 18 minutes late. Who wins this now? I actually don't know. So let's have a look right here at the unit stat. We still have some uh, simulations over here, apparently. Fair enough, we'll just keep biling whatever we can. Neural Parasite into Corrosive Bile, a combination we don't commonly see. Um, I think this is still an advantage actually here for Cure. Yeah. He can still reposition all of those CCs of his and pretty much all of his economy... I mean, other than the SCV count, has been unharmed, right? Like, all of his infrastructure at the very least. Yeah, get rid of that infestation pit, man. <laughs> Biles? <laughs> neural! Neural! Man, you could Neural it and then Bile it, no? Oh, he definitely could have. I think, I think, yeah, yeah, maybe fungal growth, neural, and then bile. Maybe it's like a, a triple step program. Okay. It's gonna be a sad day when Dark goes to the military, man. Like, I have been, I've been mentally preparing for this for like a year now. Because I know it's gonna happen. We're gonna get the news letter or article or whatever in... The probably not too distant future that we'll hear that Dark is forced to... Like, this video is going up in like a week from now, I believe. I've been preparing some videos in advance for some tournaments I'm going to, but... There's a chance that it could be announced by the time you're watching this, you know what I mean? Like, it, there's gonna be a moment where we'll all notice that Dark is no longer gonna be able to play this game for like two years. Oh, it's gonna be a sad day. There's also gonna be a moment, potentially, within the next few years. Where we'll hear that Serral also has to start up his military service. Now, I've brought this up in videos before, but... Turns out, Finland also has a mandatory military service. And that would be very awkward. If both Dark, as well as Serral, are no longer playing this game. That would be, that would be very strange. Although, you know, all of that is... Uh, I, I think Dark has to go. I'm not exactly sure how it works for Serral. 
I heard that there are such things as like exceptions, especially for like, I think there's been one exception before for a Finnish esports player. At least that's what I heard somebody else say. I never fact checked this, but at least that's what I heard. Um, and if anybody should get an exception, you know, based off of you, but I don't even know if Sarah wants that. I have no idea. Anyhow, this game is incredibly tense right now for both of these players, but neither of them is really doing a whole lot, right? Cure is kind of sightseeing right here with Marines, killing a couple Evos, whatever infrastructure you can get. Another nice fungo over here, though. Infestors are so good in the hands of a good player, right? Which is exactly why I never get any value out of them. Genuinely, though, I feel like over the last few casts that I've done of Dark, He's been, he's been playing a lot more Infestors than ever before, and he's getting a ridiculous amount of value out of them. Okay, so now Cure is, by the way, just starting s that slow, methodical late game, right? So this is not the type of Cure that we normally see. Cure is very much so the kind of guy who will create that tempo advantage and then push, 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 right? Like, he will continuously fight and try to push for that tempo lead. I don't think this is the army that Dark... Or, sorry, the, the style that Cure prefers playing. Most of the time, he's the kind of guy who will win by suffocation, you know? Like, he will continuously push, 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 and then eventually smother the opponent. I don't think this is where he's most comfortable, and you can see the Dark. Dark's doing side quests. <laughs> I don't know if there are StarCraft II achievements for corrosive biling and inf Oh, yeah, the Infestor's ready to fungal from the other side of the rocks. I don't know if there's an achievement for biling a neural parasited viking, but if there was one, that's what Dark is trying to get done right now. By the way, there definitely aren't. No, there definitely aren't any achievements like that. Pick up, 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 pick up. Okay. He's busy over here. Cure is gonna go for the move. Okay, here we go again. EMP on the other ghosts. Very annoying. That hatchery is not going to happen. I love, by the way, that he decided to take that hatchery. Absolute madman that he is. Zorkling's right now streaming into the natural expansion. Can we not... No, we're not gonna raise that depot. Okay, instead we're gonna kill SCVs and now I think a bunch of siege tanks as well here, potentially. That actually went better, though, for Terra than I thought. Bunch of the Marines here are a little bit overly ambitious. Few of them will end up going down. Dark once again, though, just going to town, eating up this Terran from the inside out. Look at this. Gobbling up all of those SCVs on the right side of the map. Fungal growth over here for sure. Yep, there we go again. That is going to enable those corrosive balls and lings and... Ay, 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 ay. 33 SCVs have gone down, but Cure still has a tremendous army. 110 army supply versus only 63 right now. Good movement right there back here. Okay, I think he should just focus all of his attention on these fights and he's probably gonna be okay. Now there are also a bunch of Vipers up in the air though. Viper and Fester, like this is once again one of those unit compositions that requires three hands for the Zerk. But apparently... Dark feels like he can do it just with his regular human hands. <laughs> okay. Dark's probably the most fun player to watch. I'm gonna just come out and say it. I think I love watching Rainer, Dark, Sarah. Like, I love watching, but I think, I think Dark's probably the most fun to watch. Even though I feel like I cast him so frequently. It's not very unique anymore. This guy, man. Very, very entertaining. Okay. That command center at the low ground is still alive. This Terran army needs to be cleaned up. And I think in the end, Cure's army is just too big. Like, I want to believe, don't get me wrong, but I've got a feeling there's just too much available right here for Cure. He's more than doubling his opponent's army supply right now. Dark has got basically no mining. Yeah, I mean, not about that hatchery gone. They're going to have to return minerals all the way to the main base. We're going to get to, like... Low double digits here of, of mineral income, I believe, here for Dark. Well, it goes up right now because the drones are returning a little trip, but before they return once again, it's gonna be an absolute disaster. If you look right here at the income advantage, <laughs> Dark actually did have a little peak there, which surprises me a bit, but I guess that's when those uh, Zorklings ran in and a lot of the SCVs again got killed. Yeah, you can see that Cure doesn't want to take any chances, man. 
He already knows that there's odds at the very least that there's like 17 infestors burrowed somewhere. Only four of them remain, but... Okay, well, Cure didn't want to take the risk, but Dark didn't want to continue playing, because he realizes if my opponent decides to step on creep, maybe I've got a chance, but if he decides to go home, he'll just remax. There's absolutely no way, so... Rather than sitting around for another five minutes or so, Cure wins game number one. Ancient Cistern. That's map number two in this best of five series. This time around, Cure has decided to go for a low ground wall off right there and a double barracks opener. I'm assuming this is going to be three Reapers into a, well, normal macro game. This is, of course, that strategy that Bion has been playing a lot. Bion's new standard. Actually, Bion has been going for some CC first as well on some maps, especially on Gressman, for example. I feel like I've seen Bion go for a Command Center first every time, so... Maybe Curus actually just taken the build orders from Bion, other than the late game. He doesn't really... I don't know why he doesn't take that Command Center approach, though, right? Like, it's kind of insane. I feel like... The mass command center style is ultimately what is allowing, well, Terran late game to be so incredibly powerful. Like, the units are one thing. Of course, the ghosts and whatnot, very powerful. I, I've talked about them in the past, but I don't, I don't even necessarily know if that's really it. I feel like the, um... Yeah, the, the value of scans and vision, right? Vision really is one of the most underrated things in an RTS game, but it's actually one of the absolute most powerful aspects. Like, there are a bunch of things that we don't really talk about very often when it comes to, like, real-time strategy design. Like, for example, unit movement speed and vision, right? Like, those things are absolutely massive. Creep spread, for example, I think is probably the most overpowered mechanic in all of StarCraft, even though nobody really talks that much about creep. Creep's insanely strong. Anyways, um, that's essentially what you create as a Terran player when you have those, you know, orbital comments in the late game, just scanning bloop, every everywhere you go. Anyhow, it's indeed three pro <laughs> three pull? It's indeed three Reapers right here in total for Cure, who's now transitioning towards a bunch of tech labs as well. Uh, there's a second tech lab in the main base. I see. Okay, so it's probably gonna be switched on over to that starport in a moment. Stimpak will probably be fired up as well here in a little bit for our Terran. Okay, so what are we gonna do here, Dark? Are we just gonna sit here and take the punches, or are we gonna try and speed up this game? Drones are going back into gas right now. Not a strange timing. Zerkling speed is about three quarters of the way done. Third command center inside of the main base here as well for Cure. Yeah, the only downside of this particular opener, of this like double barrack start, is that it makes you quite predictable as far as the mid game goes. So I kind of like this. The starport switch, though, because you really don't normally see this with this particular opener. Usually it's going to be into, well, straight Metavex and then like a Stimpak timing attack. So I actually sort of expected when I saw the double tech lap on the production tab that we were going to see... Well, both of them being on barracks, right? So we would see like Stimpak on one, combat shields on the other, and then another barracks in the main base, for example, with a reactor on it to just pump out a bunch of marines. But it's not actually what we're having here. This is Cure mixing it up a bit. This does mean that any sort of mid-game aggression is going to be a lot more passive. Although I do believe that the starport here will switch over to the, uh, the the reactor once. It's probably produced two benchies. I would imagine we're going to go for two benchies here, but it could stick around on just a single one. But if you're going to go cloak, I think you should go too. Yeah, we are going to go for a second. Okay. So, Cure once again setting himself up for a macro game. Dark making... A lot of links here, so that's kind of interesting. Dark is prepared for a 16 marine drop. So Dark is prepared for a Stimpak double Medivac push. This Benshee here is completely unscouted, but maybe more importantly, completely unexpected. Yeah, there is only just now a lair firing up right here for the Zerg. There's no Spore Crawler set up, so there's no detection available. At this point, Dark should see it. He really needs to get some form of detection out. I think he's making the assumption right now that it doesn't have Cloak. Either that, or he's taking the gamble that it does not have cloak. Well, at this point, he sees it. This is going to be painful. I guess the best thing you can do as a Zerk is just over-drone against this and just take the beatings to the face. But this is, this is pricey. Yeah, I really like this, actually. So we we did only have a single Benchy, by the way. Unless we had one dying? No, we definitely don't. My god, this is so painful. So not only did Dark make all of those Zerklings in preparation for a Marine push, they're completely pointless. Like, they have achieved nothing. So, he heard his own economy to try and get this all done. Now, he's been droning as hard as possible. So, he's got 38 Zerklings right here, but now the Marine push will hit. And all of these timings are going to be completely out of whack here. 
Lovely play here from Cure. Really like strategically how he's approaching this. So we have a bunch of Lings running around here, patrolling back and forth, trying to find where those meta effects are. Now they finally see them, but the damage has already been done. That one Benshi got 13 kills in total. It's gonna get a couple more. Yep. Okay. Not the end of the world here for the Zork player, but definitely not the start he had intended. Cute play right there from Cure. Okay, and this is where that tempo advantage once again kicks in. Tempo is certainly on the side right now of the Terran player. Who could certainly decide to go for a big attack here if he wants to. Yeah, it's safety in numbers I suppose though. So just building all of your troops up and putting them into Metavex and then starting up that double harassment. And then she's gonna go to town some more. It's on hold position here, so the Queen's now running over in this direction. Oh, Cure actually not going for his signature one-two punch. Instead, we're just grouping all of those Metavex up together. Siege tank on the low ground. This is such a banger of a spot. I really like this position. Is he gonna try and break it right away? Yeah, Dark is gonna try and see if he can break this right away, but this is gonna be expensive to say the least. Those Metavex, man, helping out so much. Queens were not here because of that Benshee in the main base, so the Benshee has been taken care of, but that allowed these units here at the front to get so much value. 16 kills, well now 17 kills already on this siege tank here. So Trifical Hooks is gonna finish up eventually, but that's still half a minute away. And this is once again a group of units that Cure can throw away, he doesn't really need this, right? Like, this is something he's just using for pressure, the real attack is coming after this. Good pickups there as well. Oh my god, going straight into the main base right now. There's the drop up north. Gonna start taking care of some of these hatcheries. Zorklings are running on over, but this now means that the marines in the main base are uncontested. The save in grace though for the Zork might be centrifugal hooks. Good targeting here. It's not done yet though. Without speed upgrade here for the banelings, they're getting absolutely demolished. So I think we should once again pick up, get on out of there. Hatchery up north in a lot of trouble. That Benshee here apparently didn't even die. I thought the Benshee must have died by now, but it... <laughs> oh my god. It was still alive. Dark decides to tap out. I guess he's had enough. This game has not been going his way at all. Next up, Gresven. Dark has decided to open up with a spawning pool first this time around. So this is a pool into a hatchery on the low ground and then eventually a gas in the main base. Whereas Curus decided once more to go for the double barracks start right over here at the front. Ah, okay, I was wondering about this pool timing. So this is Dark going for a little bit of cheese. A Roach Warren on the back of this immediately. Alright, so a hyper-aggressive opener right here from Dark. And I wonder if this is something he's specifically gone for. Because, well, Cure has been showing this double rex opener quite a bit lately. And with a double rex opener, you don't normally go for an SCV scout at the start. At the very least, not really something I've observed all too much. So, yeah, there's a good chance that Cure doesn't find out about this until either he gets across the map or until he sees a roach. That moment, man. When you found roaches or you find roaches out in, uh, in, in the front yard. It's, <laughs> it's not really where you want to be, right? Cure is definitely treating this entire map as his... Uh, maybe his garden. Ooh, very sophisticated. He could definitely grow some plants. Doing a little bit of uh, viewing of the of the grounds right now. Is that what people call it? I have no idea. Ooh, lovely little grenade. Get off creep, Brenda. That being said, though, I've got a feeling the Reaper is going to die here in the end. But at the very least, it saw the roaches. Okay, so what do we do now? Love that. Bunker offensively positioned. This feels a little bit funky. But I actually do think it has a lot of potential. Now, this is actually a problem, though. Love those two Zerklings that decided to sneak ahead of the rest of the pack. And this means that this bunker is gonna not finish up for the time being. Yeah, what Cure really wants to do is just get a bunch of Marauders going. He's actually rushing out the Concussive Shell's upgrade. So, the upgrade that we didn't see until, like, the 20-minute mark previously is now gonna finish up at, like, the three-and-a-half-minute mark. Okay. Mostly just trying to buy time right now with these Reaper Grenades. SCV, SCV! He was a little bit late on starting that one back up. Okay, lovely micro here from both players though. Trying their very best to keep all these units alive. <laughs> okay, eventually though the bunker does finish. SCV is also inside of it right now. The Reapers, I'm sorry guys. You're not cool enough. Concussive shells are finishing up though, and this is painful, yeah. This, honestly the bunker out front is brilliant. It's very tempting to, to, to put the bunker over here, right? That seems to be the obvious choice. But it really isn't the right spot. This is so much better. 
With an opener like this, it's not like Zerk is gonna have like link speed on the back of it either. Like maybe eventually it's gonna start up, right? I wouldn't be surprised if we're gonna see it right about right now, but it's not like there's gonna be a link flood on the back of this anytime soon either. And this is now a fantastic position right here for Cure. Now he does need to get those SCVs back to mining though. Yeah, he's looking around. He's a little bit afraid for a Link Flood, but he must realize that a Link Flood really isn't a good option here. Maybe he assumes that this could still... I mean, he's playing against Dark. This could certainly still just be non-stop Roach Ravager production. But good defense right there by Cure. Well handled. Okay. So, we're pumping out as many units as possible. Stimpak is gonna finish up here minutes later than originally intended, but at the very least it's gonna finish up. And there is now also a third barracks in the main base, just pumping out whatever. I think it's about time we build a reactor over here. Just so we can pump out even more units. Really? Oh, we gotta kill the Overlord. I was gonna say. Okay. Yeah, a reactor in the main base would not be misplaced, but... Okay, so what exactly is Dark going to do on the back of this? He hasn't been scouted in a while. I wouldn't have minded seeing maybe like a, another Reaper would actually probably be okay because this is a strange game to play right now and it's really difficult to figure out what you're playing against. These Terran units marching around the map right now are gambling with their lives. Because he doesn't know. He doesn't know how much there's out there. There's a very good chance Metabolic Boost at this point is done and it is indeed finishing up. There's a lot of links coming. There's a good chance that this army is just going to get demolished. Keep in mind, this is before Stimpak. So without Stimpak, these units can just get picked off easy peasy. I think Dark right now is smelling blood as well. He really would love to get all of those kills, but... Okay. Cure, it's really time to just march back home. This is dangerous, man. Yeah, originally he probably assumed that there was non-stop unit production coming out of the Zerg, which is why he kept all of those SCVs for quite a long time. And then he probably assumed that there was gonna just be drones on the production tab for the Zerg instead, so he decided to march around a bit and maybe see if he can get an Overlord or two. Very dangerous play, though. He still hasn't seen the third hatchery here on the yeah, left side of the map. Bunker now gets salvaged right at the time as Zork is finally ready for uh, their attack. So this is just a Ravager Ling all-in right now. Ooh, I don't know if I like these Marines and Marauders being stuck outside of their own main base. I actually really do like those Biles, though. Yeah, just trying to buy as much time as possible, so eventually this marine army is gonna run out of stim and they're gonna have to re-stim again. Keep in mind, there's no medevex available or anything like that. The boys are pulled away from their mineral lines right now. There's another stim pack, and these stims are pricey. Good dodging of the balls though so far, and these marines and marauders do manage to get on top of a lot of those ravagers. Ravagers are 100 minerals, 100 gas each, by no means a cheap unit at this point in the game. But you can see that these Marines and Marauders are so low. Okay, yeah, they're all basically uh, one hit away from dying now. Especially if they decide to stim again, which they may very well need to. SCVs though, trying to shoulder their way through whatever they can. Okay, Lynx tried to sneak in, but that was an invitation right there from Cure, and he slammed the door right in their face. Okay, here we go once again. Another stim. Can he get on top of all of these Ravagers? It looks to me like he will get on top of most of them. Okay. Just running straight through all of those corrosive biles. Eventually, a bunch of them do connect. SCVs are starting to fall. Marines and Marauders are also finding their graves over here. Dark, not scared by seeing the amount of SCVs there. And this game has actually sort of been evened up. Yeah, with these 16 drones right now on the production tab, I've got a feeling Dark may actually be able to pull ahead. What a game. What a game. Cure probably should have waited just a little bit longer. He really didn't need to jump there. Because he, he he had the Metavex coming, right? So, like, the Metavex are a critical unit here. And now everything's... Yeah. Everything's been working for us. Been wiped out. Okay. Lair starts up. Plus one, plus one starts up right here for Dark. Third command center in the main base. Additional barracks right now here as well for Cure. I think we're now playing this game as if nothing has happened. Yeah, we're just a few minutes from where we should have been, right? Like, normally this would be coming up quite a bit earlier than this. Maybe around six minutes or so. This time around. Okay. Everything's been thrown out of the window. The timings are a bit out of whack. And because of that, these Marines actually get way more value than they ordinarily would. This is real good, actually, for Cure. Woo, okay. He did lose a medevac and he did lose a couple of units, but getting 11 drones in a game like this is phenomenal.
Zerk is going to hit a big power spike as soon as 1-1 one, one and Roach Speed finish up. I would love to see Roach Speed fired up right now here by Dark. Right now. Okay. We're not doing it. He's busy uh, putting out more fires here on the left as apparently there was more aggression here. Sorry, I missed that one. But yeah, there's the Roach Speed coming up. I wouldn't mind seeing Dark just hold down the Roach Ravager button and just making as many units as possible, going for a timing attack as soon as those upgrades are done. That's what I would do in this situation if I was him. Uh, maybe it's not the most successful one to play, though. The problem is the alternative here is that we're once again going to just make drones and a couple units to defend and then make more drones. And then your next timing attack is really not until the late game. So Zerg doesn't really have a whole lot of transitions from here. Like, you can obviously max out on Roach Ravager and then attack. You could go into plus two, plus two, and then attack, I suppose, but ah, both of those feel a little bit shaky. Most often, this transitions either towards Ling Bane or Hydra Lurker. But, yeah, all of those things are a long while away into the future, right? So, it's not like Zerk is really going to be able to easily transition away from this. Medivac gets sniped right before it starts unloading. Good movement right there by Kyrdo, shuffling it to the back. Nice movement, of course, as well by Dark, targeting the low HP one regardless. 1-1 one, one at this point is finished here for, well, all of these units. Drop over here in the bottom left-hand corner, just two Marines. Maybe a little bit ambitious right there for that crew. Engineering Bay is gonna start up the plus two weapons. And now Roach Speed is done as well. Okay, so Dark does have 28 Roaches. It's a scary army. There are a few Siege Tanks available, three of them in total here. And I really do like the positioning of them as well, yeah. Excellent spot right here, but it doesn't properly cover the third. Just forcing the third to lift off, though, maybe all right. I actually don't think Dark can push in here. Nah. Getting nine SCVs is pretty good. Okay. So where do we go from here? I would imagine two Infestors. <laughs> I would imagine that Dark at this point is thinking about Infestors. To be fair, they would be a pretty amazing unit here. They're honestly pretty much always an amazing unit, assuming you control them well. Okay. Terran's gone into their 2-2 research right now as well, with the second engineering bay researching the armor. <laughs> There's the infestation pit. There's the bailing nest. Macro hatchery coming up too. We're currently at five barracks still. Wonder if Cure is gonna go for a fourth command center. Or if he's going to add on additional production here soon. A second factory, for example, might also be in the carts. Hitting a bit of a supply block, but luckily he can drop those depots out of the high heavens. Okay. Dark did get a base going here. Yeah, he's trying to get this one secured as well, of course. So, his economy is looking alright at this point. I don't think this is really anything to write home about. 30 SCVs, 23 drones have gone down. This is a sick series, actually. Okay, one of the Ravages here does get sniped. We're gonna continue working on these rocks for a bit longer. One thing that Zerg doesn't really have here is creep spread. Yeah, Dark's thinking the same thing right now, as he's trying to just build up as many of those creep tumors, uh, creep tumors as possible. Okay. Plus three. Fired up immediately. Yep. Cure not really wanting to go for a big timing attack here. I always kind of feel like this isn't the style that he really prefers playing, if he has any say in the matter, but... He keeps on being forced in these situations, and he seems quite good at it. Although his transitions are always a bit different, right? So, a lot of players would be more than happy right now to go for, uh, well, that late game army. Maybe build up to 8 barracks and just make a lot of stuff, or make a 4 CC and then go into Ghosts. Cure is kind of doing a middle of the road style here, which I'm usually not a huge fan of, but I think in this game it may very well work out. He is marching across, though, and there's a lot of really good siege tank positions on Gressman again as well. I mean, this is a decent one. Mostly just a set of biles right there to buy time. What Dark really wants here is, of course, that Baneling speed upgrade. Did he build any infestors? He did not, actually. He probably would have liked to. Okay. Siege tank slowly moving forward, by the way. Lynx, though? Yeah, Lynx and Roach is already setting themselves up on the other side as well, so they want to try and collapse on top of his army. This might be the moment, though, where Zerg decides to pull the trigger. The entire army is moving in the direction of all of these siege top tanks. Is there enough right here for Dark to push all of this away? 
Looks like he indeed does have enough stuff at the same time. No, we did have that little meta effect drop here on the left side of the map. Targeting whatever it can. It might even be able to go after the hatchery if he decides to target it down. Yeah, he will. Yeah, uh, not quite. I think he could have had it if he decided to target it right away. Matter of fact, dropping the main base as well, trying to be a nuisance. Good cleanup right there by Dark Biles. Ooh, okay. That was a lot of very precious meta effects going down. Mostly because our Terran player there was busy trying to micro the fight over here. Okay, a couple more Biles trying to just get whatever he can. And Dark manages to push it back. Now he's at Hive Tech. Adrenal gland starts up, plus two, plus three has started up as well. He is ultimately going into Ling Bane Ravager with Vipers for support and very stellar upgrades too. Fourth command center in the meantime is done. Orbital command here coming up, okay. So, Cure still feeling pretty good about this game, I guess. I feel like it's starting to slip out of his fingers a little bit, but maybe he disagrees. He still has a banger of a timing coming up right now though. Plus three is gonna make his units so much more powerful. Until Zerk finishes up the plus three carapace, that is. Now Bingling Speed is finished, though. Yeah, and there's gonna be quite a few of those units available. Not that many Metafects anymore. There's eight of them somewhere. Okay, some of them are here on the left side of the map. This hatchery might be in some trouble. This hatchery over here at the front might be in some trouble, too. Metafect drop in the main base. Hatchery over here is definitely gonna fold. This one is not gonna get cancelled either. Excellent drop right here. Very lovely play here by Cure. Hitting his opponent at three angles and basically winning every single one of them. That being said, this army might have a hard time retreating. Good split right there on that Medivac. Okay, another siege tank pickup as well. He's trying to just kite these Zerg units back home. The Medivac drops continue as well and these Biles will connect. Ay -ay -ay. Maybe even the spotting pool is in trouble. Oh no, losing the pool right before Adrenal Glance would be massive. He could have targeted it down, but Cure doesn't quite know exactly how long that upgrade is done from finishing. Or how far it's from finishing there, okay. Now, in the end, a lot of Biles do connect, but the Zerg's economy here is very mediocre at best. Plus three, infantry armor, finishing up very soon. Kyrv once again finding his groove. He's flown that main command center on over towards the six o'clock position right here on the map. I'm very surprised we did not see him taking this location and then a planetary fortress. That's what everybody does. It's such a good move. Planetary on the middle of the map is so sick, but apparently Cure has decided, nope. We're not playing the current meta on this map. Once again, coming in with a stim forward over here. He's not transitioning towards any of those higher tier and late game Terran units, right? It's kind of... Yeah, it's kind of cool to see. Maybe after that game one, he's like, you know what, guys? I did win, yes, but... Dark clearly seemed like a late game monster there. Okay, good sniping right there off that hatchery. I think he's rather sticking around right here on this mid game instead. Yeah. You know what? It's working out quite well for him so far. He's got a lot of money in the bank though. It really needs to get that uh, that resource count down. Taking the gases over here would be a start. Same for the base over here. He's got a lot of minerals in the bank. Okay. Yeah, we do fire up some additional gases and other command centers. Okay, here we go. Matter of fact, drop on the left side, still keeping that Zerg player occupied, at the very least preventing a lot of those Ravagers. Or, sorry, a lot of those Banelings from morphing in. We have plenty of Ravagers here. Ooh, not a lot of creep, though. Do we have any uh, parasitic... Yeah, we have parasitic bombs, but we don't have any blinding clouds available. Dark with a bit of an early GG, but I actually do agree with him. I think the outcome of this particular series is inevitable, as it's Cure who obtains the victory over Dark 3-2-0 in the finals of the KSL Weekly. Number 18. I looked it up. It's number 18.